Right on. Great to see you folks here. Uh, good to be here. Here is uh, what I think the situation looks like right now. If you asked me, uh, we are in this moment right here. Um, this right here is K-12 education, all of you in the room here. And this wave is, of course, generative AI. And who is uh, this handsome fellow right here? This is, of course, me. And I'm here to tell you folks that in times of profound tech disruption, we need to hold on even more tightly to profound truths about teaching and learning. And this follows Kurt Lewin's maxim that there's nothing so practical or grounding or orienting as a good theory. Theory is often really derided in halls like this. It's like bring data or get out or just compile it and see what happens or move fast and break things. But the theoretical, the high level ideas about teaching and learning that many of you folks know have earned, have fought for in classes, doing the work is so necessary right now. And honestly, I worry that it's getting forgotten, that some of you are forgetting the value of what you know. The glow off of this technology and the people who build it and sell it, it's so bright, I worry it's made some of you forget the value of what it is you know. You are taking teaching's final exam. And the most important question on that final exam, what is teaching? And some of you, I worry, are copying off of Sam Altman's tests. Like Sam Altman is a very talented guy, knows lots about what he knows lots about, but let's just be clear that Sam Altman would be devoured by the average middle school math classroom. They would not find his bones. It would be like a elderly wildebeest with bad knees, wandered into a pack of hyenas, just gone from the face of the earth. And you folks are copying his exam. Stop that. Know what you know and what he doesn't and the value therein. If you copy his paper, it's just like saying like, well, let's just see where this big wave takes us. The people out here in the exhibit hall, they must have the best of intentions and know the most stuff about education, right? I'm saying otherwise. So if you ask me what teaching is, my high level idea about teaching, my theory about teaching, my anchor, it's just three words, two verbs a second grade reading level, and that's that teaching is inviting and developing. That's it, it's simple, but very hard. It's not a lot of words, but it will take the best of us a career to master. Give me a couple more words, and I would say it's inviting and developing student thinking. In classrooms right now, there's a lot of teachers who are not bothering to invite of students. Students bring so much to their own education. They bring their relationships, their hopes, their aspirations, their fears. They bring ideas, half formed from yesterday, last week, last month, all these resources that they want to bring to their education. And it's not getting invited, which means that teachers are talking to themselves. They're developing their own knowledge. Again, a second time, they're retracing their own developmental path. As you can imagine, it's very ineffective for learning and deeply unengaging for students. And the same is true for so much of technology right now, doing the exact same thing. If you buy this, if you go with me on this for a second, what I'll, I'll say to you is that this is the reason why I do not believe, one of a few people in this room perhaps, that AI, I do not believe that it will revolutionize education in K-12 especially, especially chatbots. It's not going to happen. Um, because of this right here, because Gen AI fails to invite of students and it fails to develop anything that's invited. It has the classic first and last mile delivery problem that good teachers know how to solve. Average teachers know how to solve the first and last mile delivery problem. Gen AI does not. Check it out. Here's what that means. Is that if I have a letter to uh, mail to Graham Graham in Minneapolis, here's my question is, do I have to go to the delivery truck or will it go the first mile to me? and pick up that letter, it's got a stamp on it, and the USPS does a great job of this. It goes to my doorstep, it gets it. It drives over to Graham Graham, don't drive like that, that's a bad way to drive, okay? Not endorsing that. But it also goes all the way to Graham Graham's front steps. It doesn't stop a mile away and say, Graham Graham, come through the rain, sleet, and snow and come get that package, it goes to her. That's the reality of package delivery with USPS. It's the nature of good teaching. And the fantasy is that chatbots do it and they don't. The fantasy is that we found a way now with this technology to personalize learning such that it is going straight to the student's front door. 
And that's a myth. It's a fantasy of tech and business leaders. Check it out. Here's, a, here's the idea right here. Here's what happens is we got a student in front of a chatbot, right? The fantasy is that the student is metacognitive enough to know what they know and know what they don't know and articulate enough to describe all of that. And what I'm, the student I'm describing to you is like the 1% of 1% of students. They just don't have, they're developing that metacognition right now. They can't express adequately what they don't know. Furthermore, what they, the fantasy is that everything that students would wanna know is easily and clearly expressed in the confines of a text-based UI. that You can type it into a chatbot. None of it has like diagrams or scribbles. It doesn't involve talking to someone else or video. It's simply stated into a chatbot. Moreover, there's nothing else that you need to know about me, the learner. It's all in the chatbot. This is the fantasy, it's all in there. Everything about me as a human being, my hopes, aspirations, it's all in there. Um, and also, like I'm at square one with progress. Like I've made no progress, I am at step zero. When really students are at steps four or five out of six, that's where they're at. And also, pinky promise, scout's honor, not gonna open up other tabs, okay? I promise I won't. That's the fantasy on which so much of this in here is built. The reality, talk to a teacher, talk to a teacher. Many of you are teachers, are tutors, listen to yourself. Do not be blinded by the glow off of that out there. The reality is this, is here I'm like, I'm tutoring a family member from Oakland where I live to Las Vegas, and I am desperately trying to crowd, tra traverse that first mile to the student's front door. I'm like, so like, what have you done on your paper here? I'm trying to stare past Google's lossy compression. Like, what's going on here? Like, where are you at? I'm asking the students, uh, what, what curriculum, like, can you sh hold your textbook up to the webcam so I can see what your curriculum's up to? Or tell me whatever you remember your teacher saying. Like whatever your teacher said that you remember, can you just say that? Because there's like five good ways to do this and I want to do the one that is clearest to you. That's all me going that first mile to the student, which the chatbot fails to do. And we're not even done with context. It's like the student's context is so important. You know, like does, what does the student believe about math? That math is knowable or a bag of tricks? That informs my next step. Does a student believe that math is knowable by him or that he has a fixed view that math is not for him, not now, not ever? All of that has serious implications for what I do as a tutor. Uh, what day of the week is it? Is the kid gassed? Is it time for a brain break? You know, all this is context, context, context. Petabytes of context that teachers right now out there are going to their students' front door and getting from them. They are getting that from day one of class in the school year. It takes them a week to get to, to clock every single student in the room and understand the, the basics of context and then to build on that every day following. It's, it's, it's petabytes of context that students cannot, will not type into the chatbot. Petabytes that teachers store in the solid state hard drive known as a relationship. That's what it is. And so this right here, instead it's like, well, can you, can you tell me everything about yourself, would you? And students are not willing. It's too much work and the payoff is too low. The interactions feel super impersonal. The chatbot does not see the value like a teacher or tutor does. The same is true about teachers and AI also with these te this, this category of teacher co-pilot tools. I'm a nice guy, you get that about me. Okay, so I'm not gonna call out names here. Um, let's just call like this one for instance, let's just say like wizard school, okay? So there's this tool called Wizard School, and like, and it's, oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? It generates a lesson plan for me? Hold up, the revolution might actually be here. Okay, hold on. So hold up, what I do here is I type in the topic. Okay, similar shapes, all right? Solving for unknowns, we're cool, okay? But then here, I'm like, oh, a, additional context? Where do I begin? Like this box right here is approximately 200 feet too short. It should be the size of this entire wall and then some. Like the, con I've, I've built lesson plans for myself as a math teacher, high school, public school. I built them for other folks. I have packaged lesson plans in a thing we call a curriculum. And I can tell you, we need a lot more context than this will offer us here. Like what is our curriculum? What is our scope and sequence? Or if no curriculum, what's your pacing guide? What did you learn last week? Have you learned, for instance, about proportions at some point this year? If no, we can't lean on that language and knowledge uh, when it comes to similarity. Like all that's super valuable, tons of context, can't type it all in. I'm, uh, I'm just gonna offer instead something real basic. 
Uh, kid, my, the kids like TikTok and they want to know where they're going to use stuff in their life. And I got to say, now, now is where I and tech and business leaders are in lockstep alignment in saying, what happens next is pretty cool. Like, it's pretty cool. I'm not made of stone here, folks, okay? Like, when the, when the words go on the screen, you know what I'm saying? The words like, pop, 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 pop. The auto completing, like I, I'm into it. I'm like a, the, the monkey with the symbols, like ding, ding, more, more, more. You know, I'm into that, okay? Um, but then where I and tech and business leaders immediately diverge again is my recognition that this is not a lesson plan. That's not what this is right here. It does not cross the last mile to the teacher. I mean, look at it. You just got to look at it. And you folks can see this. You folks who have a theory about what teaching and learning is, you've done that work, you know what's going on here. Don't be deceived into thinking you don't know what's going on here. Here, it's like, okay, so you gotta build a worksheet. I'm like, okay, okay, that's, so that's on me then. That's on me, make the worksheet, okay? Um, a mix of problems, check. Oh, uh, okay, I guess I'll make that then, I'll make that. Um, and then for, further up here, it's like, okay, so you gotta bring some examples uh, of different pairs and, oh, interesting. Scaffold questionings from what appears to be a very early level of understanding to a very mature level of understanding. That's all on me to do. And farther up here, it gets worse. Up here is where the, the mighty power of the large language model reveals itself in its full glory. When I told it, we're learning similar shapes and kids like TikTok. And the LLM says, I have ingested the entire internet and used the, 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 the power sucking sources of a thousand suns to come tell you to find a TikTok video about similar shapes. I'm like, how did I not think of this earlier? You know, I mean, those videos must exist in the thousands, right, on TikTok? This is what I mean by the, the last mile delivery problem is unmet by chatbots. It leaves me so much still to do. And if you are in here thinking like me, it feels like the hype has not been met with actual usage. Like we've experienced the largest, most comprehensive marketing campaign of any consumer product in any of our lifetimes. It's happening now for the last year and a half. There's been nothing bigger in any of our lifetimes. And in spite of that, you have 30% of teachers in an EdWeek survey saying, I, you know, I have no plans to use this this year. Not saying never, but not this year. And another 30% saying, I don't have plans to use this ever. And so many are baffled by this. Like they just need more PD. Like we need more marketing and more PD. And I'm thinking, I don't know about that. Like teachers are smart and they see the deal. Like they see how I type in this and this and it gives me this. I think a lot of teachers are, are noting that it does not meet them at that first mile. It doesn't know them or their classes. And at the last mile, it still leaves them too much to do. Teachers and students don't need more to do. Tech and business leaders see this as help, whereas I see it as homework. I gotta close just by saying, every generation of tech and business leader seems like they have to learn the same lesson over and over again, or at least find a job that pays them to forget that lesson, which is that, which is that they think every new technology is the cheat code for education. Like this new technology is the thing that will help us route around or through faster or streamline or 2x processes that humans have been working on for all of organized human society. And they've thought this about radio, about film and television, right? Like, this is the way that we will scale learning to more people. Um, they've thought this about the internet and YouTube. Like some of y'all were around when YouTube and the internet caught fire with massive open online courses, which were said to reduce the number of universities across the US down to 10 at a certain point. Like this is the deal folks, we'll find that one best teacher. The one best teacher for algebra. We will record that teacher and then put those lessons on the internet. Problem solved, you're welcome. And while no one, no one in this room would say we are here to replace teachers, they are all too smart for that. You know, if we could pass some of the operating expenditures called a teacher on down to our shareholders, would we say no? How could we say no to that, right? 
And then the story of Gen AI, honestly, it's, it's yet to be written. It's yet to be written, I get that. I'm trying to offer a reason based on my understanding of what teaching is for why it doesn't meet the needs of teachers and students. We'll see, it would be awfully nice if people would start from a premise about teaching and learning and say, this is how that meets that premise, but instead, we have a technology that is very glitzy, very glowy, and we're saying, well, education must be the thing that that will enhance. That's not how it's gonna work. All while we, while we throw time and attention and energy and capital at Gen AI, teachers and students are asking us, the adults who organize their lives, for a very consistent set of things that we seem very stubbornly unwilling to offer them. Students are asking us for safety in their schools. They're asking us for community, for adults who care about them. They're asking for nutritious food, for clean water. They're asking for all of that. And tech and business leaders, they see those wishes and they're saying, hmm, well, we, we could do that. It is true we could do that. Uh, it would be expensive. It might entail some tax increases, not feeling that. The returns to shareholders on each of those ideas seem quite low. Um, what do we have though? What do we have to offer these people, uh, these kiddos? Um, ooh, hey, chatbots, anybody? Anybody feeling a chatbot here? No? Okay, and the kids are going under. <coughs> Likewise, <coughs> excuse me. Likewise, teachers are asking for the same stuff. Their job satisfaction is at an all time low, trending up a bit now, but we're asking them. I think we insult teachers by continuously asking them the same question. Why aren't you happy in your work? Because they tell us the same thing over and over again, and we go back and resurvey them until we get an answer I guess we like, I don't know. But teachers are consistently asking for more autonomy in their work, professional respect nationwide class size reductions, a living wage so they can work and teach near one another, so they can not have roommates into their 50s in these expensive urban areas. They're asking for the other spheres of politics and culture to start working again at the ballot box, the legislature, government, so that these political and cultural battles don't form themselves in their classrooms instead. They're asking for all of that and tech and business leaders are like, mm, well, um, those all seem quite expensive to do, very tough. Uh, can we ask them again until they tell us that they want chatbots? Chatbots, anybody? I'm just saying, folks, they're going under and we're just watching them with this stuff that's going on. So I just wanna close by saying, look, many of you in this room, <laughs> you came by your knowledge of what teaching and learning is, honestly, through hard work, through diligence, I do not want you distracted. There is some value that this new technology can offer us, but only as a servant of this higher ideal about teaching and learning. I don't want those ideals to become the servant to this technology. The knowledge you have, the principles you hold on to, hold on even tighter, that knowledge is so sorely lacking in our world right now of K-12 education and needed more than ever. Thank you, folks. Goodbye.